Mark Reckless. Uh, um, I'm grateful to the Minister for his uh, statement and uh, support the, the sensible devolution of this uh, franchise to the uh, Assembly and uh, to the Welsh um, Government. I note, though, that there's been 18 months of negotiations, and I wonder if the Minister could uh, update on why those negotiations have yet to come to fruition. He compared um, Transport for Wales to Transport for London and mentioned some of the differences. And I recall in another contest, context, despite Transport for London's transformative improvements to the overground in London, it found it very difficult to negotiate extensions, even very slightly outside the Greater London uh, boundaries to Hertfordshire and to Kent. And I just wonder what the Minister is doing in terms of those services that go along the border, in terms of convincing representatives and people who benefit from those services that a focused Welsh Government looking at that franchise is more likely to deliver improvements perhaps than a, a UK Government that has a very large number of franchises across the, the UK to consider. The gap I felt in his statement was any update on the timescale for electrification. He mentioned North Wales electrification as the, the backbone for uh, modernisation and for the Metro North proposals. But surely that electrification is still a, a very distant prospect unless he can update us on anything we're not aware of, given delays that have been elsewhere. It's, it's very difficult to, to see that North Wales uh, electrification coming on a quick timetable, and I just wonder how he can use it as the backbone for everything else, given uh, the challenges um, involved in delivering that. On electrification in South Wales, I just ask, can he give any update at all in terms of the likely timings? We saw over the weekend the uh, Bridge Street uh, bridge in, in Newport being uh, removed and laid by the tracks outside the station. And that is in encouraging and a physical manifestation of progress. But when does he expect electrification to be complete to Swansea? And what can he say about what improvements we will see in, in journey time and potentially frequency and how does that feed into the uh, negotiations around a new franchise. Could I also just say that as well as the frequency and the reliability and capacity of services, uh, many of my constituents in the South East Wales Valleys are also very concerned about cost and there is the potential uh, frequently for people who may be able to go to Cardiff or might be able to get employment in Cardiff if the transport allowed them to get their cost effectively. And cost is a really significant consideration, particularly when there is the withdrawal of tax, tax credits and, and marginal tax rates. And anything that can be done to improve the cost, certainly for a, a subsection of, of people, is perhaps the more pressing uh, issue, even if there are uh, welcome improvements in frequency and reliability. Finally, in terms of the South Wales Metro, I entirely understand why the uh, government wishes to contract and to have tenders on a uh, neutral basis between heavy rail, right, light rail and bus services. But I still find some concern that a move to heavy rail to light rail is perceived, at least in some quarters, as a potential downgrade to that service. What can he do to reassure um, people that that is uh, not the case and that light rail will be a, a potentially more than adequate improvement? And does he also understand the very different implications of capital cost of provision of bus versus light rail versus heavy rail? Perhaps the light rail might be cheaper to operate in the long run, but would have significant uh, capital investment where it would be replacing a heavy rail service. And different bidders may have different access to capital. And when gilt yields are 0.8% over uh, 10 years, when he's putting the rest, risk potentially of that capital expenditure onto the private sector, may he not uh, unnecessarily reduce the amount of uh, bids and the, the number of providers who can come forward cost effectively if they're all having to fund that capital. And some of them, of course, will be better able to do so than others. Thank you. I'd like to thank Mark Reckless for his questions. Um, first of all, one of the reasons, or two of the reasons, that it's taken 18 months is because we've had two general elections, one in the, uh, across the UK, one in Wales. This also concerns um, an operation that crosses a considerable border as well. So given those two factors, it's no surprise that negotiations have taken place over a period of 18 months. I very much welcome the comments that the members stay, um, gave about the need to ensure that the fares are affordable. 
Um, we will ensure that as part of the high-level high level outputs from the operator and development partner that any plans encourage increased patronage at off-peak times on services where patronage is currently low and also provides discounts to the cost of travel for people working irregular patterns of, of work or part-time hours. It's essential that the development of the metro should drive social mobility and enable people to access quality jobs closer to their homes where those jobs are not near their homes and they should be able to access them on affordable, sustainable transport. The operator and development partner, of course, is during the course of working through the high-level outputs, how to meet those outputs, will be able to present various solutions which best match the, um, the problems that face each respective community. I do not see necessarily heavy rail as being the solution for every um, um, problem, nor do I see light rail being the only solution. Instead, there will be a mixed um, offer of transport solutions that will also include, for example, rapid bus transit and active travel. In terms of the um, frequency of services, and the member is not alone um, in raising concerns about current frequencies, the Metro will run at least four services an hour across the entire network when needed, and even more at the network core. Travellers will be able to move easily across the South East Wales region with improved capacity, improved quality, and improved passenger information. And the Metro will also deliver a network where interchange is easy using vehicles designed for speed and for capacity. We're out of time for this statement now, but I do have a, a, a number of other members who wish to contribute. So from now on, if they can be short, sharp questions without preamble, that would be much appreciated.